So, the cable for uh, repairing the EVSE has finally arrived. Welcome back to another episode of Unplug TV Australia. So, finally, finally. It actually has arrived a week ago, but I didn't have time to replace the actual cable on the EVSE here. But we will do this right now. So, before we start, we just check the specifications of the cable. Just making sure it's the same one. And this is a H07RNF, three times 1.5 millimeter. Okay, I think this is exactly the same what we have here. Once the camera focuses. So H07RNF, and this is the 1.5, three times 1.5 square mil. Exactly the same cable. So, as I mentioned before, I would like to extend actually this piece of cable a little bit. This is a bit short here. This is about 25 centimeters only. And um, if you have to... Um, hang on. So, it is always a little bit hard to actually connect the EVSE to a power point which is mounted on the wall. As you can see here now, if I would plug in this EVSE over here, it would hang on the cable and, and yeah, this is not the best way and it's easily coming out and dropping on the ground. So you should have a little piece of string on here and then a hook on the wall to hang the EVSE, so to take the tension off this cable here. But most of the time you actually don't have a hook right under a power part. So I've decided to go with about 1.5 meter of cable. So the first thought was to make this cable a little bit longer, about 1, 1 1.5 meters long. So I can actually reach power points which are mounted on the wall without having to hang the EVSE somewhere or putting a chair underneath or something. So 1.5 meter would give me the flexibility to put the EVSE on the ground and I can still reach the power point on the wall. And I had this situation quite a few times where I could not charge because the cable of the EVSE was far too short and I could not hang the EVSE anywhere or put something underneath to lift it up and just leave the EVSE hanging on the cable is just not possible. See, on the other hand, I always have my 10 meter extension cable with me as well as the EVSE. So in case a power point is out of reach to connect the EVSE directly to it, I use this extension cable to um, charge the car. And I guess for safety reasons, this cable from the power point to the EVSE should be as short as possible. Because all the security systems are inside the EVSE and this piece of cable between power point and EVSE is not secured. So, considering my options at the moment, I've decided to extend the cable by only half a meter. This gives me a little bit more flexibility as it is right now with the 20 centimeters only, but it doesn't make it too long to uh, be a security risk. Yeah, okay, let's do that. So before we open the EVSE and replace the cable inside, I start with the actual plug. So we are now going to open the actual EVSE and what you need for these screws. So you need a T10-TR bit. So, and now comes the tricky part to open the actual case because, as you can see, the lid is not coming off. The back is not coming off of the EVSE. It's not coming off easily. You have to take a flat screwdriver and put it in between and get some force on one of the corners. And then it slowly 
lifts up. There is some glue or sealing between these two parts and it needs quite some force to actually take them apart. Still doesn't want to play the game. It has lost now. Yeah, so now I can lift it. There we go. It's not really it's not really glue or something, it's just Yeah, unfortunately Unfortunately you will damage the plastic a little bit around the corner where you go in with your screwdriver. But there is nothing else you can do. So here's our cut-off incoming cable. As you can see, there's like a little bit of a, a clamp down here. Um, you need to remove these two screws from the top here. So first of all, I will take off the terminals. And then we are going to lose this lock nut. It should be only hand tight. And then you should be able to pull the cables back. If you can't pull them back, just cut them off. As you can clearly see in the old cable here, this is where the lock nut and the ceiling sits. And potentially this is where the cable is broken. It's exactly at this position here. And of course I've forgotten to put the lock nut on the cable, so the actual ceiling has to come off again. lugs are a little bit larger than the old ones but we've got plenty of space here in this area where the terminals are so this will work Everything is reconnected. Just checking all the terminals again. Okay, that's it. EVSE repaired. We can give it a quick test. Just close the lid for security reason and uh, plug in the EVSE. So this concludes the repair of the EVSE. I've got a new cable on here. It's uh, yeah, it's quite, it's pretty good. It's a good length. And the whole repair took about um, 20 to 30 minutes. So I'll give the standard EVSE a good test tomorrow. Fully charge the car from empty to full, and make sure there are no hot spots in the actual plug or in the EVSE. Nothing gets hot. Everything is working as it's supposed to be. And then it goes back in the boot ready to be deployed at work when I charge the car over there. If your EVSE is faulty as well, please contact your dealer, your Mitsubishi dealer first and see if the EVSE is not still under warranty. And because you are dealing with live wires here, 240 volts, this work should only be conducted by professionally trained and licensed electricians. Like, um, this is under no circumstances a do-it-yourself work at all. So make sure you follow all the safety rules for electrical work in your country. Okay guys, as always, thanks for watching, thanks for your support. This is Andy from Unplugged TV Australia signing off. You stay charged with your freshly repaired EVSE and we will see us again in the next video coming soon. Okay guys, see you then, bye bye.